I'm Abby and this is Abby Matt Reads. Hope you're all well. Um, today I'm going to try out reviewing just two books instead of three to see how you might like a uh, shorter video. If you do like it, put a thumbs up down below and I'll make it a permanent thing. Um, also, I'm oh, going to start trying to put out two videos a week. One in the week and one on the weekend. But I can't promise I'll do that forever but I will give it a go okay and I hope you like them and I hope you like this. The first book I'm going to review is T.E. Carter's I Stop Somewhere. Now it may seem contrary to say that you can read a beautiful book about sexual violence but this is exactly what I Stop Somewhere is. Ellie lived in a broken down very poor town called Hollow Oaks in New York with her father. Her mother left not long after she was born. She was bullied at school and even though she's very intelligent, she had very low self-esteem. She was desperate to fit in, desperate to be pretty no matter what that meant. And starting at a new high school, she met a boy named Caleb who made her feel those things. But as the book says itself, this isn't a story of great romance or of true love. It's simply a story of being lonely and how comforting it is to be called beautiful. As you may have noticed, I refer to Ellie in the past tense. This is because Caleb charmed her, took advantage of her, raped her and killed her. And from the beginning of the book, the stories alternate between Ellie's story of how this all happened and her as she is dead now in the room where it happened, watching it happen to other girls absolutely powerless to save them. As disconcerting as it seems that that could be your fate if you die or God forbid are murdered, Ellie's observation in this room is extremely important. There are small details about rape and sexual violence, not about the act itself which is never graphically described, but small details that make this book so heartbreakingly real and true to life. Like Ellie's disgust at the word rape, to quote the book again, you're now a rape victim, rape survivor. Your identity is attached permanently to a word you hate. This book captures the injustice and the audacity of our rape culture brilliantly, even perfectly. And really it explains what it means to be a victim and have it take over your entire life. Ellie's narration, both in her life and death, are very philosophical. It really brings you back to being a teenager again when everything was so serious and melodramatic. But knowing that Ellie's life was cut this short is, makes it so sad to think that she will be this age forever. Dead Ellie sadly comes to realise that it was never about love as rape is not. It's all about power. It's not even about sex. And she starts to recall things as how she never felt magical the first time Caleb kissed her, as she found out afterwards that he raped women while they were dating. And that for her, it was not about being special or pretty at all. It was just about being a girl. But the good news is, is that one of these girls is going to bite back and raise public awareness as to Ellie's disappearance and question the community as to where she could be now. All the characters are characters you've met and know and they interact with each, each other and the story brilliantly. My favourite is Ellie's father who has been devoted to her her entire life and in, in the sad parts where he is trying to figure out this teenage girl who's like a foreign animal to him and he stretches out across the gaps to try and reach her but ultimately can't. And in no means less, the character of Kate, who Ellie states was never really a proper friend, but if you read the book, you might, like me, disagree. This book is so well crafted, you can tell that Carter poured her heart into this and put such careful thought into it as well. It's not a light read. Be prepared for an emotional roller coaster. Be prepared to cry and be prepared to be angry at the injustice of sexual assault victims who have to try so hard to make themselves believed, much less be heard. Um, you will race through this book craving justice for Ellie and all the other girls. An easy five out of five for me. The second and last book I want to review today is Neil Gaiman's Fragile Thins. Um, 
Fragile Things is a compilation of short stories, something that I don't usually go for because I like, I like a good long novel, a big story, but it's by Neil Gaiman, which changes everything. I fell in love with Gaiman whilst reading American Gods and I truly believe he is the master of words. He has such a big and beautiful imagination which is something that is evident in every story in this book. Just for my notes and for my crap memory I wrote a brief synopsis of every story in my notepad and gave it marks out of five. The only one that got a low score from me was pages of a journal which is a very brief story set in diary entries about some seemingly ageless woman who's looking everywhere for some person named Scarlet. I just thought it was disjointed and I didn't connect with it well, but that's just my humble opinion. And for that one story I didn't like, the book is packed with stories I adored. I can't list all the stories I loved here because it would take too long and besides I want you to discover these amazing zany tales for yourself. But here are a few of my highlights. Um, a Study in Emerald which is a retelling of Sherlock Holmes and it's great. Um, Neil Gaiman has also, as in the books and the TV show, has his own way of brilliantly describing Sherlock's deductive processing system. It's also wonderfully twisted which you must get used to in Neil Gaiman stories. Also there's Other People, a story, a brief story about a man being tortured in hell by a demon for thousands of years and he learns to prefer the physical torture over the mental anguish of recounting over and over again the times where he has always been hurtful in the past to others. There's also my absolute favourite of the bunch, Feeders and Eaters, about a young man who's living with a creepy old lady who has an unhealthy obsession for raw meat. And I won't tell you any more about that. You have to discover it for yourself. Each story stands alone as really individual and Gaiman's writing is adaptable to any kind of story. There's a brief introduction to every story so you, which you can read and really find out just how much his work does mean to him. I was really delighted that at the end there was a novella from American Gods picking up two years with Shadow um, after American Gods ended. This was a, a great read and I give it four out of five stars. There so I hope you enjoyed the new shorter version of my video. Um, you can decide obviously you can decide yourself whether you like it or not so it's up to you so uh put a thumbs up or leave a please don't give me a thumbs down if you don't like it and you'd rather have my free videos leave me a comment it's much nicer um if you're new to the channel please subscribe and you can find me on twitter at at abby mac reads um i'm on facebook as facebook.com forward slash abby mac reads and it was great having you here. Bye.